my name's Rowan and my two boys are Jacob and Sam. Both of them were in the project, Jacob from right at the beginning and Sam from a couple of years later. It's mostly on my husband's side. We have his youngest brother, he's quite severely dyslexic. We were also talking to another family member, I think my husband's um, aunt, and she was saying that of her four children, um, three of them have dyslexia of, of different levels. But um, yeah, so there is obviously um, you know, quite a, a strong link there somewhere in the, on that side of the family. Sam, who's uh, my youngest son, he had a very strange uh, speech impairment. He hadn't shown any signs of speaking at all um, by the time he was two. And in fact, he made a, used to make a strange grunting noise to communicate. The pelvic visitor sort of referred us to the various sort of hospital departments and we did do some um, blocks of speech therapy. He was given a diagnosis of verbal dyspraxia. Eventually, when he did start speaking, the um, speech therapist did actually say that she, he didn't actually clear up in the way that verbal dyspraxia clears up because it's apparently very resistant to therapy. And he actually just suddenly started talking and acquired language in the space of about two months. So it was very odd, but obviously it was a worry at the same time because it, it, there, was, there was no language there at all. And he was struggling even in speech therapy to make you know, the basic sort of sounds that, that children make when they are learning to speak. When he went to, into the nursery, he was talking, but especially if he was getting a bit excited, he, it was all sort of coming out in a jumble and it, it could be quite difficult to, um, to understand. By the time he got to reception, I felt that you know, he was starting to pronounce things clear, more clearly. Um, and, but he took to reading like a duck to water. Is the batch job computer programme then? Gib asked. Since when have you been interested in computer programming? You hate the subject, I scowled. The books that I enjoy reading are the ones I read all the way through. Those are my favourite sort of books. Like the reading, like my school readers. Mm -hmm. Both boys struggle with a fine motor control. Um, Sam in particular has a very odd pencil grip. I don't really hold it properly, but then, I, but then it's, but then my handwriting gets even messier holding it properly. And it hurts a bit. Yeah, so how do you hold your pen? Like, with most of my fingers. That's the only thing that's really hard about the actual writing. And I got quite sort of concerned about that and we got him referred to the, the hospital who said that it was actually, you know, he might not ever have the neatest writing, but that's fine. Um, and so his handwriting is, it's not great. You know, he does struggle, but it is, he's getting better. And they also struggle with things like um, cutting or anything that's sort of like fine motor control work. Sam um, also has problems with coordination, um, which is also one of the reasons we went to the, the hospital. He didn't get a diagnosis of being dyspraxic. What he, we said was he's, um, he has problems attaining coordination. So anything like swimming, cycling, using a knife and fork um, are always going to be a slow process uh, for him. I found being involved um, with both children was very interesting. We had had these um, warnings that, you know, a speech impairment can, you know, mean that there are going to be learning difficulties. So it was really nice for us that at that young age we were seeing the fact that he was his scores for the tests were, you know, above average, that, you know, there wasn't anything other than the original problems that he had with his speech where he was um, faring badly. So it was nice and reassuring and it's sort of that tied in with the fact that he started making progress when he went to school and began to read very, very quickly indeed. The kids have enjoyed it. They like, um, I think they like the special, the, feel, the feeling of being special, you know, getting some time out at school to go off and do things with the ladies from the university. Somebody once said to me that you are your the child's best advocate. There's no use waiting for a teacher or a healthcare worker to start the ball rolling you have to do that but also you've got to be prepared I think to do stuff like conversing more reading more just 
that all helps.